Hi guys, I'm Nutrix the Synth Guy. Welcome to another video of my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to test out and I'm going to explain a bunch of plugins from Isotonic Studios. You know Isotonic Studio if you have a circuit from Novation. Uh, and I did a video about the engine of the Novation circuit and I used the Isotonic Studio, which is a free circuit editor and you can actually change the internal patches uh, inside it. So it's probably over there. You can click it and see if you want to. But Isotonic Studios also, I did do a review of Ultra Kick, which is a um, uh, kick drum or any type of percussion sounds designer. Um, what's cool about all these apps, uh, either the circuit editor or Ultra Kick or what I'm going to talk today is Netrush Collection. The Net Rush collection and everything else, they're all made with uh, Max. So they run directly into Max as a standalone object if you want. Or you can actually run them in Max for Live and use it in Ableton Live. The Net Rush collection is actually a combination of two package of plugins. There is the glitch pack and there is the effect pack. The glitch is mostly well, you guessed it, glitch stuff. So a lot of timing and, and resequencing and, and moving around with samples of the original files. We'll see them together. And the other one, the effects, well, you guessed it, are effects. So delays and stuff like that. And uh, But they all have the little, let's say, digital noisy approach, if you want. Uh, you know, by default, glitch is a digital noise in a way, some type of electronic sounding result in this. So this is not in any way emulation of analog circuitry or stuff like that. These are to create electronic sounding result and um, it's fun, you know, depending on what you want to have. So this is not like, oh, I want a real reverb or play reverb. That's not what it is. It's really about glitch and weird electronic effects. But again, any effects when you push them to the maximum it becomes weird and bizarre and then when you control the value to something more subtle it can really enhance without too much masking the original so it depends on what you want to do in the glitch we have the nobulator the mashup the scrubber and stitch so we have four of them i'll do another video just for the effects these will be in the second video after this one Remember that if you buy the whole collection, you get the two packages for a better price. Uh, the whole package, it's 45 pounds for the, you know, 10 plugins. Okay, so let's start this one, the Nobulator. Nobulator is, is a weird little thing. Um, actually, there's a big knob. That's what they call it, the Nobulator. It can be assigned to a controller if you want. And, you know, you can assign most of them to controllers on, on any type of controllers you want. I'm going to use the mouse for now, the trackpad. And when you click on it, it turns on. So if you release the knob, the effect stops. If you click on the knob, the effects plays, quantized to the value you have here. So 1N is one bar, 2N is half, uh, you know, half a note, quarter note, eighth of a note, sixteen of a note. And then you've got the dotted with the D dotted value. So this is the quantized for coming in and coming out. You also have the fade. If you wanted the, the, the effects to come in gradually, there's a fade value here. There's not, there's three different modes. You get the knob control. If you press on knob, it means that when you click, when you activate the knob and you move it, it will be hearable. It will be active. When you release, it will stop <coughs> within the quantized value. The toggle, you use that button here to turn it on or off. So this is more if you want to use the effects and you want it to stay. Uh, and you have automate. And automate, you can then automate with, with... But let's go back to knob and let's hear what I'm doing. So I'm going to turn this on. So you hear the sound. That's my original beat. Okay. Bring the effect up. See, when I press on the key, when I press on the mouse pad, I'm going to release. When the quantize value, it will actually release. That's on time because I'm using a quarter note. If I'm using something else like a stretch, Bye. 
So you can actually just turn it on when you need. So it's pretty fun. And again, if you use it in a subtle way, it can recreate just, you can create, you know, kind of a uh, break beats in your songs and, and different you know, version of your beats if you want. So it's pretty interesting. One way you, I like to have it, just if you want to hear what they sound like, you can toggle, you turn it on, so it's always on. So this one is repeat. Repeat back, backward. You got scratch. And you change the length of the scratch. Pitch down, turn it on again. These are the effects. Stop. Should we wet? It's actually pretty efficient. It's time to st stretch. Let's go totally wet. Pitch stretching. Again, turn it on. Combine with the original sound. So the beat. Low pass wobble, high pass wobble, bend pass. Low pass, talk box. More like a dish tizer if you want. Okay, the one cool one I like is this one. Calm filtering. So again, if you play it with subtle values, you can use it in, in a song in a way, but if it's too high, these become really just weird stuff. So it's all a matter of how you want to control it. I'll just give you ideas of what you have. Again, this can be really useful in a song. You get the original beat in the front, you get this thing in the back, you give another depth to your sound, some movement in the back. This can actually be useful. So that's, that's, turn this off. That's the nobulator. Next one is the stitch. Um, I, I select the stitch as the next one because it's actually a fun way to look at this. Stitch, I'm gonna use the same song, same beat, okay? The same beat. Now, if you look at Stitch, what you have, on the left side, you have this box here, the, this grid if you want. And the grid shows you the different effects. Each line means, um, actually each column 
means a step in the step sequencer, because that's a big step sequencer basically. And each line means a different type of effect. So the, the one at the bottom is forward, forward repeat, then you get reverse repeat, uh, DJ stop, DJ start, loop up, loop down, pitch up, pitch down. So these are the effects. If we, if by default we turn it on, you've got these things like that. You have each one is a different effect, okay? Uh, and this one at the side here, it's the length of each step. So you can say, I want the first one to be longer. And the other one, I don't want to be as long. And what I mean long is that kind of a hold or kind of a de decay on the, on the effect. Okay. And this one here is uh, the length or the timing of each steps. Is it a sixteenth of a note, sixteenth of a note, a full bar, and all the options in between. So you could have something that plays a whole bar, then it's going to be four, 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 then it's going to be a whole bar, and then it's going to be uh, this. So this is going to be one bar, four, 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 actually, and these could be different effects. So the one bar is going to be one effect, four, four, four different effects for each of them. So let's say I'm going to say, let's try this. Okay, let's listen to what it does. So you have the sound here. Okay, if I bring it up. If you look at all the side, they're playing at the same time. So you play the one first bar and the forward repeat. Then the second is going to be quarter notes playing different effects. Let's see, we've got forward repeat for everybody. Okay. I'm going to have this one, I'm going to have that one. I'm going to put it like this. Actually, let's play this. Let's try these different timing. One cool thing is you actually can go in and say I'm going to render. Let's, let's say we're going to keep all the same ti timing. You can randomize on the next. Every time it changes. Then it becomes something weird. You can randomize all of them on the next. Pass. Let's say we keep a, something s static like this one, and this one we keep it so we have. So what I have right now, I have my choices are on the left. I've got my choices of effects on different steps, but the steps length are changing every time the next pass is happening. So it's always creating new movement in it, but there's only one thing moving is the length of the steps. Or I could have all of them to the same value. Maybe I want the last one to be longer, maybe like this. Okay, that one is longer and this one is longer. But this one I want it to be randomized. When you go randomize, you wouldn't be surprised you have some weird stuff happening, you know. But at the same time, you go, oh, that was cool. I want to keep that, you know. There's still one thing here. There's a number of steps, you can actually go up to 32. 
we will randomize on all these and so they're all going to be randomized. So you can really program this the way you want. It's really, really powerful. Of course, if you just do anything, it's just going to be weird. But if you use it the right way, it can become a nice, again, way to create new beats out of an old beat. And there's also global random. So everything's going to be randomized on next pass. I'm going to move that down. Actually, wait. It's going to be down. That's it. If it's when you have too much randomize, it's just bizarre. But again, the right values at the right moment just create something really nice and create really, uh, you know, break beats out of this. Okay, cool. So that's the stitch. Then you have mashup. Mashup, you load it in and you drop a sound file in it. So there's a drop here. You just take it from the list, drop it here. Again, I've got the same same beat I'm going to play. Uh, what you have now is something a little bit different. We've got these, all of these are samples. Okay, it's going to actually, it's going to um, slice it up if you want. How many slices you want is your choice here. 32 slices, 8 slices, just one big chunk if you want. 4, I'm going to go with 8 for now. Actually, I could go 16 for this. You go 16, okay, and the loop length is gonna be one bar. Actually, no, two bars are the right thing. So maybe I should have 32 in this case. 32 slices. And you can say, I want them to re-trigger at uh, 16th of a note. Then you have this thing here is that these are kind of the pro probabilities of how it's going to work. You've got forward, you've got backward, you got slow. And depending on where you put this, it's how much probability that this one will take over. You know, if you take more slow, then you have slow. Slow backward, it's going to be implemented in it. It's going to switch between them. Oh, I want more forward. I want a little bit of pitch stop, but I want less of it. So sometimes I'm going to stop and I slow backwards some of it. Uh, stretch, I want more. Pitch roll. But I find it's too fast. I'm going to go like this. More often than not, I want a four a quarter note, sorry. But I also want some sixteenth of a note. And I want some full bar. Less 16th of a note. My main value in this case would be fourth, a quarter note here. I don't want backward. Get rid of, get rid of backward. That's it. So by playing with that, you're kind of building new loops or beats using this, depending on the probability of what you want. I don't want any forward anymore. I want this. I want all of them to be able to play around. So it's going to go randomize between all of them to the same value. Or no, I want more of the first one, less of the other ones. I'm going to get rid of the dotted values for now. It is 16th, and I'm just going to keep those, and maybe have more of the fourth quarter note, sorry, or the half note, and I'm just going to go slow backward.
use this. So again, this is just another way to create other loops out of the first one. And again, if this is at weird values, it's just gonna sound bizarre and glitchy, uh, which is also can happen if you want, you know, if you if want let's say I put more and I'm gonna take this to this level here. And really create stuff that we're not close to the original. But let's stay with, you know, making a beat that you can actually use. I just show you the, the different ways to do it, you know. So that was mashup. So the last one we have is scrub. Now scrub, it's for creating that uh, DJ on vinyl type of uh, slowdown and backup, you know, so you hear it play and turn it on. It actually is gonna go in stream, so it means that the sound's gonna go through it. And when you grab this and you move it, you move the last stuff that we just received. So it's gonna be in buffer if you want. You have a buffer size, which, which is in this case one bar, and then record one bar and then you go, you can scrub it if you want. Or you can actually grab this I think I can play that. You don't hear the original in it when you scrub. If you go stream, you hear it. It's gonna still grabbing new stuff. You also have slow, so, so the movement is slower, and it means that it totally stops. So go we'll stop, and then that's normal. So this, you can actually assign it to a controller and do it in real time. So again, it's, it's for that one effect itself and that's it. So the scrub, if you need it, it works. Interesting. Uh, and done. These are the plugins you find in Ned Rush Glitch Collection. And they're, they're just fun and weird. Again, it's not for everybody because not everybody wants to glitch their sound. But if you want this, especially I like the stitch is one of my favorite because it's, it's a little sequencer that takes what you have and repackage it in a different way. So the glitch and the, the nobulator are the most interesting for me in making new beats out of recorded loops. So it's an interesting process. Again, if you go too far with it, it just becomes weird and not really usable. But in the case of using it in a subtle manner, you can create really cool things with it so that's it for now guys if you like what i'm doing thumb up any comments put in the comments and i'm gonna do another one after this video uh the other video will be about the other bundle that is packaged in the ned rush um what do they call it the ned rush audio collection to package into one collection you have the glitch package which is the one we just talked and you have the effect package so Next video is gonna be about the effect package. So I'll show you what it is and how it sounds. And again, for the price, these are not really, I mean, these are really affordable. They're really not high costly. So if you like this, if you like glitchy sound, if you wanna play around with this, it's a pretty cool buy for, for, the, I mean, for the cost anyway. It's not really, it's, it's fairly cheap. So see you soon and watch the other video, bye.